can we target specific emotions through our music? Are there specific musical devices that we can use to target specific emotions? Or is it all up to interpretation? Is it all completely subjective? In this video, we're gonna explore, can we actually target specific emotions within music? And if so, how can we go about doing that? Hey yo, what's up? It's Alex from Men of My Music. And as always with this channel, it's my mission to help you, the artist, produce yourself by developing your mindset, expanding your creativity, and connecting to your music in a deeper way. How to express emotion in music. We all know that music is inherently emotional. Some people call it a universal language. Some people see it as a window into the soul. I would probably say that it's a little bit of both. Today we're talking about emotion, probably one of the center of the bullseyes when it comes to expressing yourself and making an impact with what you create. So is there any universal truth when it comes to how music affects us or is it all completely open to interpretation? So on my journey, I've tried my best to explore this question from multiple different angles. How can we express ourselves through music in an intentional way? What kind of tools can we use to better understand how relationship affects us as human beings and how we influence others through music as well. So just a few examples of different perspectives around this is The Spirit of Music by Victor Wooten, The Quadrivium, which explores music and how it connects to geometry, math, arithmetic, The Artist's Way, which really explores how to connect to your inner artist and express something deeper within yourself. And This Is Your Brain on Music, which explores how music affects us in our brains and what kind of centers gets activated when we listen to music, how it affects us emotionally, etc. So my goal with this video is to condense the key takeaways that I've learned from reading these books and doing a little bit of research online as well as my own personal experience to hopefully get a roadmap and a guide as to maybe how you can target specific emotions in your music or at least understand what role music plays in emotional connection, in reviving memories in triggering specific responses in a listener. So let's get it. The first thing I want to talk about is exploring the contrast between internal emotion as a creator and how that affects people externally, other people experiencing your music and having some sort of emotional reaction. If you've been into music for any amount of time, you'll know already that music is a very powerful transformational tool, both in listening to music and creating music. Okay, so let's focus on creating music first. When you're creating your own music, you're slowly shaping and refining, you're exploring things that resonate with you in where you're at right now. Maybe you write a sad song, maybe you write an upbeat dance song that matches the mood you're in. Maybe in exploring and experimenting with new sounds and new ideas, you discover new parts of yourself within exploring those vibes. So as a creator, it's kind of a two-way streak. Sometimes in the process of exploring and experimenting, we find new parts of ourselves in the process as well. As a creator, you're going to have your own influences, you're going to have your own memories, your own personal experiences that will all shape and express themselves as what you resonate with in terms of music, in terms of themes, in terms of genre, whatever it may be. As an artist, part of your role is to continuously discover the things that speak to you on a personal level. It might be a specific type of sound, it might be a specific genre of music, or it might be certain musical devices that you've identified over time, maybe certain chords, certain chord progressions, certain keys, certain scales that really hit a specific emotion for you. And because no one thing will ever affect everybody the same way, it becomes a little bit more subjective. Whereas a certain chord progression might really speak to you, it might not really invoke the same emotions in somebody else. What I would suggest as number one is to continue to focus on discovering the things that truly resonate with you on a personal level through your music making. Because you having an emotional reaction through something you're creating or something you finished is something that is real, something that is tangible, something that speaks to you enough that it motivates you to create it, right? So those kind of shards, those kinds of signs that you find as you're investigating your creative process, as you're working on more and more projects is something to definitely take note of. Because now when we think about bridging the gap between what we feel as artists, what we feel as musicians through our own music and how other people might react to that, I would say the best bet that we have is to really fine tune how we feel and how we react to the music 
And chances are that other people might feel the same way. Because on the flip side, when we think of other people experiencing our music, people in general have a wide range of different tastes and will react differently to different music. Some people might really vibe with and feel emotionally connected to the top 40 type of sound, whereas other people might feel nothing and no connection to that kind of music. Typically, most people can agree on a good song or good sounding production. However, no song or production will hit everybody the same way. Not everybody is going to resonate with one piece of music. So at that point, I think it becomes a little important to understand what type of music listener you are, what type of music creator you are, and what other people would probably most likely enjoy what you're doing. However, when you take a step back and think about it, most people would probably identify a major chord to sound more happy than maybe a minor chord. Okay, so does this speak to maybe there are certain musical devices that can trigger specific emotions? Another thing to consider is that emotions themselves are very ephemeral. Most people, including scientists, can't even agree on what emotions are Exactly. Let me read you a little passage from this book called This Is Your Brain on Music. If you're interested in this kind of stuff and really nerding out on the neurochemistry behind music, definitely check this book out. But let me read you a little passage of this book. This can't even agree on what emotions are. We distinguish between emotions, temporary states that are usually a result of some sort of external event, either present, remembered, or anticipated, moods, not so temporary, longer lasting states that may or may not have an external cause, and traits, a proclivity or tendency to display certain states, such as she is generally a happy person or he never seems satisfied. All right, so that's pretty technical, but basically all that means is that nobody really knows what emotions are really okay we have some ideas as to how they affect us how it might be linked to motivation like the book goes into and how it plays an active role in our decision making our lifestyle and ultimately how we react to situations and the destiny of our own individual lives so one way that i like to think about it is just looking at the word emotion it's energy in motion. So it's something that you're feeling that's either usually attracting you to something, it's pulling you to something or pushing you away from something. And that emotional kind of driver, that energetic driver is something that encourages you to take action or to take inaction. The emotions usually either attract you to doing something, they motivate you to do something, or they usually repel you from something. They motivate you to avoid something. I do think there is some truth to linking emotion to motivation and this idea of tension and release. Because when you feel an emotion, whether it is positive or negative, there's a state of tension. There's a state of something driving you to go to a specific endpoint, right? If let's say you desire a cookie, okay, you're going to have a desire, some emotional pull to want to eat a cookie. And then all of your memories of how good a cookie is and how it fires all of your neurons in terms of taste buds and an experience will kind of move you into a state where you're going to actually take action and move until you get a cookie and you eat it. And then you're going to feel satisfied from that emotion. So again, there's that tension and then there's release when you get to the climax or the end point of where that emotion is driving. It could go the other way as well. Maybe you're in a room with somebody that is really not vibing with the space and there's a tension that you can feel in the space that's like, I don't wanna to talk to this person. I don't wanna interact with this person. So that tension will cause you to maybe go into another room or maybe even leave the party altogether until that person is no longer around. And again, you have satisfied the tension that you're feeling. So again, I think that's very closely related to motivation and what drives us to take action towards things. And in my opinion, I think this might be a parallel to how music moves us on like a micro level of tension and release. It kind of plays upon that same dynamic that we're very familiar with as humans. One of the major players when it comes to playing with tension and release and creating emotion and having impact on yourself and other people with your music has to be the idea of context. One specific isolated event, whether it be musically or in a story, doesn't have too much inherent meaning until you place it in a context. So for example, you could have a very major sounding chord, a very happy sounding chord in a minor key, and that chord will not necessarily make you feel quote unquote happy. Another example is maybe a character in a story. So maybe you have a bully and a bully in and of itself 
could be maybe a bad thing, but if you take a bully and you put it in the context of criminals, murderers, and other bad people in prison, that bully doesn't look like a bad guy anymore. So all that to say is that context is one of the most important things when it comes to music. It's also one of the most important things when it comes to how we react to music is the context that we listen to it in and the pre-existing context that we have in our personal lives as to how we relate to that piece of music. I was asking my mom about this and she really has a nostalgic connection to the disco music of the 80s because she grew up in that era right so she loves the bgs the moody blues earth wind and fire all of this like good field time dance music right and she has a really happy association and deep connection to that music because it's part of her childhood it was part of her growing up it was a big part of her personal journey so she has a specific context to interpret that type of music so maybe four on the floor drum beat with like off beats on the hi-hats really funky guitars really high vocals right a really funky dynamic that's aimed to help people dance but maybe someone like me when i listen to disco music it doesn't have the same emotional impact on me because i have a different context that i'm bringing to that music I didn't grow up listening to it and it wasn't a huge part of my coming into enjoying music. But aside from actual music context, it also relates to us on a personal level in terms of things that we've experienced, things we felt, vibes we felt, and chapters that we've had in our lives. So for example, myself, I grew up listening to grunge music, like psych rock, prog rock from the 70s from my dad, and yeah, of course, new metal because I grew up in that age. But in my journey, I had a big metalhead phase, right? Where I really connected to heavy music because I went through some challenges when I was 14, 15, 16, 17, and onwards. And I started having a pretty calloused and dark perspective on the world and how it was run and the reality that we're in and it led me to resonate with that music on top of the crazy guitar riffs and the the heaviness and for me it connected with me because it resonated how I was feeling at the time it made sense to me however if I show some of that music to other people they might just perceive anger and noise and not connect to it so again everybody has different experiences that they've gone through that will enable them the context to connect to things that resonate with them specifically. And I would flip it to you to think about what are the things that just resonate with you naturally from your whole life experience, what you've gone through in high school, in your early adulthood life, what you're listening to now and how that reflects on your life's journey. All right, so the last thing I wanna explore in this video is, is there any kind of evidence or helpful information that can help us target specific emotions or at least be a catalyst for us to explore different vibes, different things that we can express? I was reading this article, I'll link it below if you wanna read it, from the Abbey Rhodes Institute. And it was very interesting, whereas it explores how neuroscience and cognitive psychology studies can maybe start deciphering some of the mysteries surrounding music and our emotions. All right, and this really points towards what we were discussing earlier in this video. First, let's have a closer look at our emotions. The word emotion comes from the Latin word emovir, which means to move, remove, agitate, or stir up. Again, tension, and then resolving that tension to release. We can be moved by a piece of music where being moved describes our emotional state. When we try to express that internal movement, we try to use words like joy, sadness, anger, fear, disgust, surprise, and love. Funny enough, this article quotes Daniel Levton, who is the author of This Is Your Brain on Music. Music can be thought as a type of perceptual illusion in which our brain imposes structure and order on a sequence of sounds. Just how the structure leads us to experience emotional reactions is part of the mystery of music. So there's a second part of this article that goes more into a practical approach to imbuing emotion to our music, and it distinguishes two different aspects of this, the song and the production. I bang on about this when I teach my clients and my students, but songwriting is storytelling, okay? Telling a story, even if you don't have lyrics, with the musical aspects of your song is essential for creating that tension and release for creating an impact on the listener. Another really useful thing is to think about the musical modes as having different colors, all right? Different kind of vibes, different emotional characteristics that they usually 
evoke. All right, so check out this new cool screen. Hope you dig it. But I'm going to bring up a tool called Scalar 2 to help us explore these different musical modes and how we can use them to convey maybe specific emotions. If you haven't checked out Scalar 2 yet you, and you're an artist that's wanting to produce your own music, you want to compose your own stuff, I would highly encourage you to check it out. I made a whole other video about it exploring its features in depth. It's a really powerful tool. So if we have Scalar here, I have just this normal piano sound lit up and it shows us what notes I am playing on my push two over here that you can see. So one cool thing about Scalar 2 is that it has all the scales built in. It has a bunch of songs. It has custom made chord progressions from all sorts of cool artists around the world that we can use as prompts to help us explore new musical ideas. One cool thing though, is that when I go to scales, you'll notice that we have all of these different scales starting on C and they have some words associated with it. So our C major scale and associated with that is happy, light, bright, positive, uplifting, right? So if we play in the C major scale, we can really get a happy kind of vibe. Cool. What's the next one? The minor scale. So it's a little bit more dark. We have that minor third, a little bit more serious. minor sixth right so it's more serious sad emotional sentimental cool but now let's check out some of these other modes there's the dorian mode this is one of my favorite modes and it's jazzy bluesy rocky sophisticated so it has a different flavor it's still a minor mode we still have a minor one chord but we have right? Kind of a cool, more jazzy, funky, higher part of the scale, right? With this natural six. If we move on, we have the Phrygian mode, which is exotic, Latin, lively. Some might even say dark. You have that minor second. also have that minor sixth then we have the Lydian mode which is hopeful dreamy yearning ethereal right some might even say otherworldly right because we have this tritone we have this sharp four which is very dissonant in and of itself but it can be very uplifting Next, we have the Mixolydian mode, which is positive, bluesy, rocky, and poppy. And some might even say psychedelic. At this one, we still have our major one, but we have that flat seven. And then the final mode of our major scale is the Locrian mode, which is very complex, unstable, exotic. And the reason why this Locrian mode is so dissonant is because our one chord is this diminished triad so this is home base for the scale right okay it's pretty tense if you want to learn more about the seven modes of the major scale and really what defines them and how to interact with them intuitively i've created a whole other video exploring that in depth you can check that out in the card above the awesome thing about scalar 2 is that there's all these other scales that you can explore that have more complex emotions like the dorian flat five scale is mysterious dark and unstable right maybe we go down here and we look at the ukrainian dorian scale, world music gypsy eastern european mysterious and these can be very useful cues for you to explore those types of emotions right like maybe we want to have something that's yearning and emotional, but something a little bit different, right? We can explore the chords of this C Lydian sharp two scale, right? So that means the two chord is going to be very unique, right? That kind of weird augmented sound. Right? We still have like a very emotional, happy home base, but we have a lot of tension in the scale, right? 
One thing I want to caution you against is to approach your music in an overly scientific way. And this is why I had kind of a hesitation and have a hesitation to answer these types of questions when people ask me is because usually what will end up happening is people will take these kind of tips and this kind of guidance and approach their music mentally and try to calculate how to express emotion or how to calculate how to impact people with your music. But at the end of the day, it all comes down to feeling and what we talked about at the beginning of using your own internal barometer as to how you feel when you're creating stuff and as you're making music and using that feeling, what you're feeling internally as the catalyst for how it may impact other people in the future, as well as your decisions. One thing that I've learned in my journey is that you cannot calculate a feeling, okay? You can theorize about something, you can try to create correlations and notice patterns, but at the end of the day, any kind of description of an emotional event will only be a description. It will only be the map, it will never be the territory. Because a feeling is visceral, it's a feeling. It's not just an idea. And hey, if you're interested in learning more about how to pinpoint musical elements and processes and ways to interface with your music that deeply resonate with you, I've created an in-depth masterclass called How to Master the Three Secrets of the Creative Process that I've jam-packed full of actionable insights that I've learned on my 10 plus year journey, mixing, creating music, producing music. So if you're interested in checking that out, you can find it in the link below. If you got value out of this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you want to stay in tune for the next Meta Mind Music Transmission, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And I would love to know, what do you think about emotion and music? Do you think that you can calculate emotion and target specific vibes and feelings with musical devices such as modes and tempo? Or do you think that it's all more so subjective? and just more of a feeling. I'd love to know your opinion in the comments down below. This is an endlessly fascinating subject that we really just touched the tip of the iceberg on. So let me know if you want to explore these types of ideas a little bit further. And with that said, I will leave you and love you and I'll see you in the next video. Without music, life would be a mistake. Frederick Nietzsche.